Yo, 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 yo. Good morning, everyone. It's Chris, Crispy Captain from Twitter, YouTube. Uh, wanted to do a quick video again, you know, another morning cap with Chris video. Uh, today is April 24th, 2022. Yesterday, we had a four game slate. Um, wanted to do a quick video to kind of recap yesterday and tell you guys what I'm looking at today as always. Um, so, to, so just recapping yesterday, uh, I didn't. I didn't make a lot of plays. I did do a a, a, a live uh, Twitter space um, uh, at the halftime of the Jazz game. Uh, <laughs> Jazz were playing the Dallas Mavericks, and I thought they they were up by too many points. So I told people, you know, live bet the live bet the points and put a little bit on the money line as well. Uh, they barely, 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 barely lost that game. Um, but you know, shout out to the Utah Jazz for tying the series up. So just a quick re recap of yesterday. Uh, you did get the Raptors avoiding the sweep um, in game four. Came out with a lot of pride. Won the first quarter, uh, won the first half, um, won the full game. Um, so, you know, the, ship, the series will shift back to, to Philly for game five here soon. Um, the, I talked about it already, but the Jazz tied that series in Luka's return. 30-point return for Luka. Um, but the Jazz were able to get the win, you know, late down the stretch. Uh, we still cashed on the plus five and a half, on the plus 14 and a half, the plus eight and a half. Um, like I said, I had a little sprinkle on the money line as well. Um, Boston continues to be dominant, <laughs> continues to beat up on Brooklyn, man. Nobody really saw that one coming. I don't think anybody predicted the series to go Boston to go up 3-0. Even the Boston Celtics fan I know, the Celtics fans that I know, uh, didn't see that one going down like that. Um, but yeah, shout out to Jason Tatum, shout out to Jalen Brown, uh, Udoka, Marcus Smart. Those guys played really, really well um, yesterday and was able to, you know, just go up 3-0 in Brooklyn yesterday. Um, as Kevin Durant kind of faded in that game and just wasn't as aggressive. Uh, and then Cat, shout out to, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, bouncing back. He had two games in his, you know, last two weeks where he's had more, more, uh, more fouls than points. So nice bounce back spot for him yesterday. They were able to, the, the Timberwolves were able to get a one point win last night as well. Um, to even that series up uh, in Minnesota. So that series will shift back to, uh, you know, back to Memphis for game five here soon. <laughs> Um, and in today's action, and that's what I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, we got a, a, a good four games, a four game slate today. Uh, you get the Bucks and the Bulls. You get the Golden State Warriors and the Denver Nuggets. Then we also get Miami and Atlanta, and we get Phoenix and uh, in New Orleans tonight, man. You know, so another you know just great day of basketball in general. Uh, really looking forward to these games. Where I want to go today, though, and what I'm looking at. First game up. It's a one o'clock Eastern start time. Uh, Bucks and Bulls. Um, so in this one, you get a line that opened at four and a half uh, in favor of Milwaukee. They absolutely came out and dominated the Bulls from the beginning of the game. Uh, the Bulls stole game two in Milwaukee. Uh, the Bucks bounced back and uh, they 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 took control of the series, regained control of the series uh, in the in the game uh, on Friday night. Uh, it was over with before it started. First quarter, first half, full game. A uh, bunch of money was made in that game. Bobby Portis had a huge game in place of Chris Middleton in that starting lineup. And they looked to be a little too too much, a little too too big, too much length for uh for the Chicago Bulls. Um so what I'm looking at in this game, so so uh, let me go, let me go back through it. So the Milwaukee Bucks opened at a at a four and a half point favorite. Uh it got bought down, down at three and a half. I do anticipate Chicago to fight hard in this game. I don't think that they'll come out and lay an egg the same way that they did. Uh, Billy Donovan, if you watch the post-game interviews, he talked about the adjustments that needed to be made. Um, I still don't know if the Bulls have enough, though. I do not know if the Bulls have enough. I'm not playing this game officially, but the only way I would look is, especially as the point spread gets bought down, I would only look to Milwaukee. Milwaukee's been playing really good on the road. They're 4-0 ATS in their last four games as a road favorite, 5-1 ATS in their last six road games, 5-2 um, ATS in their last seven playoff games as a favorite. Um, and then you, the Chicago Bulls, man, they, they, they haven't even been winning at home recently, which is, which is uh, you know, kind of bad for them because that, that's where they typically play well. They, the Chicago Bulls are 3-7 and seven ATS in their last 10 games following a straight-up loss of more than 10 points, and that'll definitely be, you know, the situation they'll be in today. They're also 0-5 in their last five home games um, and 1-7 and seven ATS in their last eight games versus a team with the winning percentage above 60%. So we talk about it, you know, throughout the Twitter space all the time. The Bulls just don't play up the competition, um, and they struggle. They, they really struggle. I do expect them to be competitive, um, and what I'm looking at in this game, because I don't think that this game will be a, a, a clone of what we saw in game three, I do anticipate the Bulls to come out early and, and, and try to pick up the pace. Uh, 
Billy Donovan talked about them playing with much more pace, not even necessarily being fast break points, but just playing with more pace. So I do anticipate that. What I'm looking at in this game, though, I'm looking at Caruso. Um, Pat Williams was actually called out uh, by, by, Coach, uh, by Coach Donovan in the postgame interview and said that he just can't be this roller coaster that he has been. He scored 10 points in, uh, in the first game or, or game two. Um, and then he, he shot 0 for 6, 0 for 7, I think, in game three. So they'll need someone else besides, you know, um, uh, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan to be able to score the ball. You can tell, you also can tell that Zach Levine's just not 100%. The guy's just not 100%. Um, you know, he, he, he's not, he's a tad bit reluctant going to the rim. Um, just not as aggressive, not even shooting the ball aggressively. Uh, hasn't hit his point prop in this series yet. They, they continue to set it at 22 and a half. Um, but back to what I'm saying, Caruso. I'm looking at Caruso. Caruso's, Caruso's point prop is sitting at seven and a half. Um, I expect the bounce back performance effort-wise from the Bulls today, as I've said already, after being punched in the mouth by Milwaukee in their first home game on Friday. Caruso's cleared this number of seven and a half um, twice in this series already with nine points in both games. Uh, he also finished on the hook one time with seven points in the first game. He's also shot the ball seven, eight, and seven times in those two games. And I tell you guys all the time, when I'm evaluating player props, I really look for volume. So if you're telling me that Caruso is going to shoot the ball seven or eight times, which I anticipate that he will, I do like the point. I like his point prop over seven and a half today. Um, but to continue, the opportunity I think will be there because his defense will be needed to slow down the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, they have great guard play. Grayson Allen shot the ball extremely well. He, he's been matched up on Giannis as well. Um, so I think that he'll be out there. He's averaging 35 minutes, uh, you know, in the first two games. The last game was a blowout. He only played 20, 26 minutes. But I do anticipate Caruso to go over his point prop of seven and a half today. Um, I, think it's, I think his threes are also something to look at. Not telling you guys what to take. But, um, you know, Caruso, one and a half threes. I think I saw it at like minus 110. Um, he's attempting five and a half per game. And he's made three in the previous two matchups. So in the previous two games, he's already cleared this number. Last 10 road games, as far as the Bucks' defense, they finished bottom 10, three-point defense, uh, allowing teams to shoot 38%, which is, which is 21st, but also giving up 15.8, almost 16 makes per game, which is 28th or the third worst over that stretch. So that's what I'll be looking at in this game is Caruso. I expect a bounce-back performance from him. Even on the offensive end, because he will be out there, and they'll need it. They'll need the offensive uh, effort from Caruso today. I also think people like Bobby Portis, who played well, could continue to play well. He, you know, played for Chicago, you know, previously. His point prop sitting at 13 and a half. I like that look a lot. He'll definitely get the, the volume as well, just kind of filling a void for Chris Middleton. Um, and DeMar DeRozan. DeMar typically doesn't have back-to-back -back bad games. He didn't even shoot the ball bad. They just were outplayed in uh just, just kind of punched in the mouth so early in that game that he didn't play a lot of minutes late in the game. So the Rosen point prop, 28 and a half. I think I saw that plus 100. I love that number. I expect the Rosen to have another big game today, uh, as he did in game two. Um, but those are my looks for today. Full, full, I'm sorry, half unit play on Caruso over seven and a half points. Like I said, I like his threes. If you're, on, if you're playing it on FanDuel, you can get his threes uh, at, at three. I think it's plus 310. That's extremely good value, being that he's already cleared that number twice already. Um, and then I think four threes for Caruso was plus 1220. I really love the value, you know, not saying to put a full unit on it, but, you know, just a, just a little dabble on Caruso. Just because the Bucks defense, specifically against the three, is not what is, is not good. It's not good. They got a lot of long defenders who who typically, uh, you know, clog up the paint, ha having, uh, you know, people like Brooke Lopez back. Um, so I do anticipate that the Chicago Bulls will be able to score from the perimeter in this game and shoot the three-point ball a lot better. So I'm looking at Caruso, his threes. I'm looking at his points, but officially half unit play Caruso over seven and a half points. If you enjoyed this video, as always, consider leaving a thumbs up, consider sharing it. Tell a friend to tell a friend is what I always say. Uh, and leave your best bet. What's your best bet for, you know, the Chicago Bulls and the Milwaukee Bucks game, but also for the other games. Spaces will happen today, 12 o'clock Eastern time or noon. Um, Eastern time. Uh, good luck to you on all your best that you place today and let's cash.